Project 2025 provides a range of options for economic reform which vary in their degree of radicalism. It is critical of the Federal Reserve, which it proposes to abolish, and blames it for the business cycle, and advocates for free banking and or commodity-backed currency, such as a gold standard. It recommends eliminating full employment from the central banking system's mandate, instead focusing solely on targeting inflation. Before the Great Depression, there was no Federal Reserve and the economy was constantly volatile. Going back to the gold standard would prevent the government from expansionary policies to reduce unemployment during economic downturns. There is no benefit to voters to have a volatile economy without the Federal Reserve. This is going back to failed practices that happened before the Great Depression. Allowing unemployment to increase will not help the economy either. Our current inflation was artificially created by corporate greed and price gouging. Inflation is currently under control and prices are falling. The Federal Reserve controls the amount of money that is printed. Without this moderation, we would have uncontrolled inflation. We also could have no new money printed, which would create economic stagnation. The bottom line is that moderation is the key. The project seeks to extend the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. More specifically, it recommends simplifying individual income taxes to just two brackets, one 15% and the other 30%, with the latter applying to income above the Social Security wage base to ensure the combined income and payroll tax structures act as a nearly flat tax on wage income beyond the standard deduction. It aims to reduce the corporate tax rate to 18%, describing it as the most damaging tax in the country. It seeks to impose a tax on capital gains and dividends at 15%, compared to a proposed 45% rate by the Biden administration. After these reforms are implemented, it recommends that a three-fifths vote threshold be required to pass legislation that would increase individual or corporate income tax to create a wall of protection for these tax reforms, despite a general consensus that the enforcement of legislation which binds a subsequent Congress is unconstitutional. Moreover, a rigorous study published in 2024 by economists concludes that while the 2017 tax cuts did indeed spur investments, not just in the United States, but also internationally, they came at the cost of raising the national debt. According to projections by the Joint Committee on Taxation and the Congressional Budget Office, extending the 2017 tax cuts would grow the deficit by $4 trillion by 2024. Having a flat 15% tax between the standard deduction and the Social Security tax cap would be a regressive tax structure. It would force those who make less to pay the same rate as those who can afford to pay more. Those making the least now can't afford basic necessities as it is. It is effectively a tax increase on the lowest earners. And the second tax bracket of 30% is effectively a tax decrease on the highest earners. The corporate tax rate is currently 21%. Biden proposed a 15% minimum corporate tax rate, not the 45% that the project states. There are currently corporations that make $1 billion a year or more in net profit, and they pay 0% plus they get additional money back from the government. They don't need a tax cut. Investment income needs to be taxed at the same rate as wages. Taxing investment income at the same rate as wages would decrease wealth concentration and raise significant revenue to reduce our deficits. Requiring a three-fifths majority vote or 60% is not democratic. A simple majority is all that you need in a democratic vote. Of course, Project 2025 is not about preserving democracy, 
but that is beyond the scope of this video. The 2017 tax cuts blew up the deficit, and the deficit is something that Republicans are always complaining about. Extending the 2017 tax cuts beyond 2025 will only dig our national debt even deeper. Project 2025 suggests the abolition of Economic Development Administration at the Department of Commerce, and if that proved impossible, the EDA should instead assist rural communities destroyed by the Biden administration's attack on domestic energy production. By 2023, the Biden administration had already granted more permits for oil and gas drilling than did its predecessor. Project 2025 also seeks to facilitate innovations in the civilian nuclear industry. The U.S. is currently the largest producer of fossil fuel energy under President Biden. We are not only energy independent, but we are also a net exporter of energy. I really have to wonder why there is such a big push for fuels that are toxic and polluting. It sounds like there's a corruption cover-up somewhere. Project 2025 declares that God ordained the Sabbath as a day of rest and recommends legislation requiring Americans to be paid more for working on that day. This shows the project's Christian nationalism plan. Our First Amendment grants us freedom of and from religion. Project 2025 wants to force us into a certain religion. But make no mistake, Project 2025's version of Christianity is the only version that will count. Project 2025 aims to institute work requirements for people reliant on the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as food stamps. There they go again. According to factcheck.org, since Biden took office, more than one million people have left the food stamp program. The way to get more people off of food stamps is to pay them well enough so that they can support themselves. Project 2025 is split on the issue of foreign trade. On one hand, Peter Navarro advises reciprocal higher tariffs on the European Union, China, and India to achieve a balance of trade, though it is not true that all American levies are lower than those of America's major trading partners. An analysis by Goldman Sachs suggests that Trump's protectionism could generate enough revenue to cover the tax cuts he and his supporters want. Trump's tariffs might even have a meaningful effect on inflation and economic growth. On the other hand, Kent Lassman of the Competitive Enterprise Institute promotes lowering tariffs to cut costs for consumers and more free trade agreements. Lassman argues that Trump and Biden's tariffs have undermined not just the American economy, but also the nation's international alliances. Imposing tariffs with the intention of economically decoupling from China and benefiting the working class is one of the few things Trump and Biden agree on. There they go again. Tariffs are a tax on goods, and they are paid ultimately by the consumer. If you add a 10% tariff on anything, you are effectively imposing a 10% tax on that good, and you are increasing the cost of that good by 10% therefore creating a 10% inflation on that good. Tariffs are just a sneaky way to increase taxes and hide them. So in conclusion, there is no way to discuss economics without including some politics. None of these economic proposals benefit consumers. If you look at this proposal, and I'll have a link for it in the description below, you can clearly see that these economic ideas benefit the rich. I encourage all of you watching to call your members in Congress and let them know that Project 2025 is not in your best interest or in theirs in the upcoming election. Until the next video, take care and remember that your money matters.